Good evening, everyone. Hope you're doing well on this rainy, grey day in Berlin. Uh, welcome to the World Bank Show. I am your hostess um, for the night, oh, Lady Gabby. And um, <clears throat> yes, I am. Uh, we're in a new space, so sorry about the little glitches that you may have heard before, or some song that started with me just touching the screen or trying to figure out the space board that's in front of me. Anyway, we're in a new studio from the House the Statistics at Alexander Plus. So it's it's really for once it really feels like a proper radio studio. So I'm very happy about that. On Collaboradio eighty eight point four or Collaboradio dot org. So, um, yes, tonight we're just going to take it easy. We're going to have uh, two guests only. Usually I have a few more, but tonight I thought just two guests and we can chat about their upcoming projects, works, um, and everything they've been doing. And um, I would like to welcome... Um, anyway, so I just, um, just while my first guest, Nicholas Schreck, um, is... Um, Gonna, I'm going to be playing one of his tracks that's uh, basically he's going to be doing a live gig in Leipzig this weekend at the world's biggest gothic meeting festival that's completely infamous and outrageous and awesome and I think, I don't know, brings visitors, gothic visitors from all over the world to see bands, to have workshops, to chat and all that. And uh, my first guest, Nicholas Schreck, he's going to be playing in Leipzig this coming Friday and uh, I wanted to chat to him about the festival and his role and his performance. I actually never been to Leipzig, um, the festival. I've been to Leipzig, but not the festival itself. So I'm very curious <clears throat> about, um, yeah, what's happening there, what actually takes place. I've seen a lot of amazing, glamorous photos of people dressed up, um, and it just looks like amazing, like thousands of thousands of Alice in Wonderland uh, navigating through um the festival and seeing all these bands and acts and yeah um it's called uh, the gothic uh treffen welt gothic treffen um wave und goth treffen 2023 in leipzig um i'd like to Welcome, my uh, first guest for tonight. Um, we'll just have a little interview with him and then he can tell us about the track that he'll be playing. Thank you for inviting me, Lady Welcome. Gabby. Welcome and pleasure to be here. Yeah. Um, I suppose before we start, since this is about music tonight, we can play a track. This is a preview track from my upcoming album, which is called Time Machine. And it's a concept album that encompasses different musical genres and styles from the entire 20th century. And this first song, this will be the first song on the track. Nobody has ever heard it yet, except for the musicians who played it. So your listeners tonight will be the first people to hear it. And this song is the song that starts the album, and it is called... 21st century and it sort of sums up my emotions and deeper feelings about the past 23 years of this era that we're in. So this is 21st century. Slap in the face from divinity 
the horrible part of humanity would feel the revolting reality an infinite sea of idiocy stupidity spewing conspiracy sanity's sudden fragility Modernity's manifest misery So this is the 21st century 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 Trapped in the flow of technology Hypnotized palms and machinery March to the market of melody Shoot to the slaughter of usury Insidious triumph of treachery So this is the 21st century So this is the 21st century I heard the voice of the prophecy I summoned the spirits to come to me They parted the veils of the mystery They showed me the coming calamity And then to add insult to injury They softened the cut that was hurting me Algorithm implanted inside of me Haunting the ghost town of memory The future a luxury cemetery I merge with emerging emergency The ocean of history's tragedy There is no secret society No, this is a cosmic catastrophe This is the 21st century This is the 21st century Give us the solace of century Give us a moment's tranquility Give us a whisper of hope We're going viral Eyes glue to the phone Together alone A fentanyl dream No way to know A terrible clarity came over me a slap in the face from divinity The horrible heart of humanity Revealed a revolting reality An infinite sea of idiocy Stupidity spewing conspiracy Sanity sudden fragility Thank you, Nicholas. 21st century. When did you write this song? Uh, in the 21st century. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> well, we started recording this album actually about a year ago. It is quite a complex um, project because it's actually that ancient idea, a concept album. So as I said, it goes, it begins with this song, 21st century, and then the name of the album is Time Machine. So then it okay. goes back in time through the various decades, and it has a very typical song, many of them very different than anything I've ever done before, like a song that sounds like it's from the 80s, mm -hmm. the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, the 40s, and then going back into time. Okay. So this, is, this begins where we are now, okay. and the frantic chaotic sound of the 21st century okay and i can tell you the inspiration yeah. for that song that was is, my next question yeah i knew it telepathically <laughs> i could feel it through the radio waves um 
in that song, uh, it is, most of my songs are not really autobiographical, but that one is much more a direct expression of exactly what I felt at that moment. But one, the middle verse of the song, the bridge, the kind of slower part, mm -hmm. in, I should point out this concert that I'm doing Friday at 8.15 in Leipzig at the WGT is the first concert I've done since the pandemic began. Okay. And so this, this album, Time Machine, is kind of somehow a distillation or essence of everything I have felt during this period. Okay. I wrote a lot of these songs during, during the, the lockdown. Uh, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so this song, 21st Century, one of the verses on right before December of 2019, I was booked to do the world, the, the world Gothic Treffen of 2020, and of course it was canceled, and that would have been the beginning of a tour of Europe and America. Uh, Rose McDowell of Strawberry Switchblade and many other projects was due to, to co-headline with me a tour. Mm -hmm. She was going to play with us at World Gothic Treffen. We had all these elaborate plans. We were rehearsed and ready to go. And then, of course, the pandemic came. But before that, I was getting clothes for California because I was going to go there to play and to make a film, and I don't have any clothes for hot weather. I have my usual elaborate black attire for Berlin that just doesn't work in steaming, in steaming <laughs> Los Angeles. So, so I went to KDV to get some clothes. It's okay. a department store here in Berlin yeah. that would be suitable. The famous one, too. The famous one, for, uh, suitable for the infernal temperature of Los Angeles. Okay. And when I was there, I suddenly had a premonition this is December. Okay. There's no reason to get these clothes. Nothing's no. going to happen. Okay. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen. I knew it in my bones. Okay. And I said, am I going to die? What is this premonition? It right. is so clear. And I put the clothes back and said, it's not going to happen. Wow. Then, and I had this feeling of dread of something coming. And all, all these elaborate plans for 2020 that I had, I knew this. This is just not going to happen. Right, okay. And uh, on, on um, New Year's Eve, for the first time in many years, I got some psilocybin from a Vietnamese source, very powerful mushroom, and, and I turned down any invitation to any New Year's party, and I knew I have to Getting go, to this deep, trip. go deep into my mind yeah. and, and sit alone in front of my shrine where I meditate okay. and figure out what the hell is this feeling of dread and doom. Right. And I had a feeling, a vision during this psilocybin trip that if you can imagine a gigantic tunnel stretching billions of years, that mankind was sinking into something that it can never get out of. Mm -hmm. And you know, like you, that we will be trapped. Mm -hmm. And and the metaphor for it that came to me was it would be like if you went outside your house and you looked up at the sky and saw the, the sun and the clouds and the blue sky, but then you started to notice the sun is actually just a light. Right. And the, and the, the clouds are painted. Right. And the blue is blue paint. And you're not really outside. You're still inside. inside. Yeah. And it was a very Gnostic feeling that we humanity are trapped right. in something and that we're and and you know and about a month after that vision you know there started to be word of this chinese uh infection and then of course it was here in berlin and then mm. shortly after that everything was closed and i believe it was true we we did enter something that's very hard to get out of yeah true and and though i think it was the the pandemic, l partly, I do think we are still in some kind of metaphysical trap. I think, I do not think the world has normalized in any way, you know. So that's the mood of that song, 21st Century. And is it like, do you see that song like an optimistic thing or 
utopian or dystopian? How would you? Say? Well, it's it's just a dis- it's it's a very expressionistic feeling of my mood about this entire right. past okay twenty three years, yeah. which has seemed pretty dismal and dark overall. Twenty three years. Well, of of this century yeah. so far, which is we're pretty yeah, deep yeah, into it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, when you think of how. The 20th century, by 1923, a lot of the terrible things that happened yeah. were just about to start. So, yeah. so here we are yeah. with a war and, and having recovered from a plague and, yeah. and social unrest yeah. and attempt coup d'etats attempts in many yeah. countries, uh, you know, divisiveness in every, you know, political divisiveness between people everywhere. Well, yeah. I think we are on... You know, like a tinder box, like mm-hmm. we were before World War One. Yeah, um, yeah. It's are you, are you scared sometimes? No, no. Oh, okay. I, look, knowing history, I'm not particularly scared, okay. but this is a very troubling time. Yeah, and, and absolutely. And so that that's so the song is just capturing my mood. Right. Of that. Okay, and um, in Leipzig, I ha- you've performed there before, right? Yes, At this uh-huh. festival. Yes. Tell us about the festival. What, what, what's well, it like? Well, basically, the Weltgothic Treffen started in the 90s. Uh, I believe it started even... In, I think the first em- embryonic version of even began in the DDR in Leipzig mm-hmm. from a very small contingent of Gothic fans. Like, a, you know, it began at a tiny little club and then it it bloss it was i mean its name tells you that world gothic treffen yeah. meeting yeah. and and it's gone from this meeting to become the hugest i mean it takes over the entire city of leipzig yeah, uh, every yeah. single venue in leipzig is filled with you know bands playing from yeah. all over the world people come from all over the world part there is a very extravagant part of it that is fashion Oriented for yeah. sure, as you as you were saying, yeah. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. People people come dressed to the nines, but yeah. then but then there's a more serious musical side to it. And sometimes, frankly, these two things don't Mix. coalesce together. Okay. But okay. it's you know there's something for everyone. Yeah. It, it, there there's everything. Every kind of genre of alternative music is there. Yeah. But, but it's become you know it's become like the gothic. Woodstock, Woodstock um, and, and 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 what's unimaginable about it is every, even the mainstream places there, like the museums, uh, art galleries, everything, okay. everything becomes occupied by it, oh. and it's and it's become one of Leipzig's biggest tourist attractions. Mm. Every hotel is booked, mm-hmm. so it's an incredible experience. I wow. would say everybody should see it at least once. Yeah. And of course they should if they're gonna do it, it should be Friday at eight fifteen. Okay. When, when my you'll, show yeah. performs. Um th- yeah, so it's like basically like what Vakan is um for for, for metal. For yes. metal this is for Gothic. It it is the Mecca of the Gothicism. Mecca. Yeah. And and uh I think in America and England people would be surprised how much Goth is still a vital thing in Germany. Oh yeah. In a way that it is really not in England and yeah. America. Yeah. So it's still a living force whereas yeah. in in uh the US and England it's sort of a nostalgic thing right. people associate with the 80s. It's yeah. still very much developing. There's still I mean now frankly a lot of it is superficial and right. fashion oriented yeah. but but it's still a, a, mm. a vital yeah. genre here. So why do you think that is compared to like uh, it's the same in Australia, for example, the gothic scene like is pretty much passe. I mean, it was a huge thing in the 80s. I was also part of it. Um, you know, I really enjoyed it. And yeah, I moved on from that. But why do you think it's still so relevant and so pro- uh, prominent in Europe compared to where we come from, me, Australia and you, America? I, th- I, th- or England, have, th- I have thought about that a lot. The interesting thing is that this is also the the reason I'm doing this concert on the 26th is the that weekend, the 27th, 28th was the first concert of my band from the 80s, Radio Werewolf, premiered May in in that time frame at the Music Machine in Los Angeles in right. 1985. Okay, when Death Rock was pretty new thing. Yeah. And uh, and so we're celebrating the 38th anniversary of Radio Werewolf okay. by playing some Radio Werewolf songs that we have not played for decades. Oh, awesome. So that will, the first part of the concert will be dedicated to a kind of celebration of the 38th anniversary of Radio Werewolf, okay. which is the Ur 
gothic band of Los Angeles, which okay. at that time was more called death rock. Death rock in Los Angeles. That was the genre. Right, death rock. and and I can recommend people interested in that a, a, a book by a British writer named Mikey Bean. Okay. Called Phantoms, and you can order that online on Etsy. That is a, a beautiful, comprehensive history of L.A. death rock, and there's nice. a very long chapter with interviews with me and my colleagues about Radio Werewolf and my other okay. musical ventures. But so one reason we're doing that is because of this Radio Werewolf anniversary coming mm-hmm. up this weekend. Okay. But as far as why is Gothicism still a living thing in Germany and Europe, whereas it's not, I think people forget that in in the 19th century when Gothic literature started, to like when Edgar Allan Poe began writing in America, yeah or Bram Stoker, or... Yeah, or Mary, uh, Mary Shelley. Yeah. Mary Shelley. Yeah. Um, and, and Mary Shelley's a good example. Let's Frankenstein, in many ways, her novel, written yeah. by an 18-year-old teenager, is, yeah. is in many ways the originator of, the of let us say, modern yeah. Gothicism. And she wrote it, she began writing it in Switzerland, which at that part was considered part of the Germanic world. I mean, it was before Germany even existed yeah. as a country. As a country but yeah. the way that the, the interesting thing is the English who, that's what you think of Gothicism, Dracula, Frankenstein, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, yeah. the monk, all of these, li- the Gothic literature. Even Jack the Ripper. Jack, the, Jack yeah. the Ripper is very yeah. much a part of yeah. that whole 19th century Victorian yeah. Gothicism. Um, they looked, and Edgar Allan Poe actually was like the first person to say that it's not this, what was called the Shower Romana, mm-hmm. the, the Shudder novel. Right. Ger- Germany, Germany used to be looked at by England and America the way that we now look at Transylvania. Right. Everyone looked at Germany's where there's haunted dungeons and, right. and forests with werewolves. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, people like Hoffman and sort of forgotten Writers. There was a German um, fiction writer named Hans Heinz Uvers, mm-hmm. who was a very famous horror writer. So the English and the Americans that now you think of all these Gothic classics from those two countries, they were emulating and looking at German literature, yeah. like novels like the Teufel's Elixir and Gustav Meyrink and, mm-hmm. and many other you know, European writers who've been forgotten. Yeah. So in a strange way, it's come full circle. Germany was in many ways the cradle yeah. of this kind of, of horrific, kind of, gothic, yeah. dark literature. Yeah, okay. And then, and I think the reason it's, it's in the, during the Third Reich, Goebbels pretty much prohibited that whole, they, they, the, the Nazi, National Socialists looked at horror and gothicism as decadent and, right. and depressed yeah. and also okay. not going to cheer people up when you're right. trying to fight a fight war. A war yeah. So so Goebbels kind of banned it. So Germans never saw all the classic German horror as, films. Yeah, they okay. they never experienced what right. the rest of the world did. Oh, okay, interesting. And so I think uh, but I think Germany <laughs> has this deep shadow side. Mm. It has its dark side and I think and and also I think that the word for Gothicism in Germany is Grufti. Grufti, that's Gru- right. Grufti, which is actually like a grave, a grave. like like someone. Yeah, Gruftis. Yeah. Or like commie, Nazi. Yeah. Ger- Germans abbreviate yeah. National Socialism to Nazi, yeah. Communism to yeah. Commie. So it's abbreviated. So Grufti, from Grufti yeah. someone someone who comes yeah. from the grave. A yeah. Gruft is the grave. A Gruft, yeah. So that's, that's right. a lot lot more darker, serious yeah. than Goth or yeah. Death Rock. So a Grufti is like someone from the graveyard. That's right. I haven't heard that term in a while. Yeah, now, it's uh, in the yeah, 80s. I love it actually. Grifty. Well, like like uh, hippies in yeah. in in Germany, you know, had were not called hippies. Yeah, you know, so yeah, so it's a particularly German, very yeah. serious yeah. as Germans dark are, and dark and and, yeah. and and you know, haunting Friedhof cemeteries. Yeah. And I guess most of Europe is like that. Too. Yeah, Western Europe or oh, Eastern Europe too. I right. mean, you know, in Eastern Europe you have a different type of goths which is much more taken seriously by everybody, not just right. by the people who wear black and all that and makeup and listen to the music, but literally that people in like I know I'm born in Transylvania and I know my grandparents were very superstitious and right. believed in demons and believed in werewolves and believed sure. in spirits and um you know Well Romania yeah. Romania before Rome 
Rome conquered it. Yeah, uh, you know, Dacia. Yeah, Dacia. Dacia. Dacia, Dacia yeah. had a very. It still has a very yeah. deep shamanic, yeah. pagan religion, and a, and a lot of these ideas of what Gothicism is that Bram, comes from that. The Bram Stoker yeah. and and other English and American writers yeah. comes from a, a kind of misunderstanding or fragmentary understanding mm. of Transylvanian. Yeah. And Romanian folklore. The yeah. interesting thing, as you know, being a Romanian, is that Transylvania is very Germanic. Yeah. And it is called and Sieben Siebenbergen, the yeah. seven mountains. Yeah. And there's a legend that the Pied Piper of Hamelin. Yeah. Um, when he, we, you know, I don't know if, if everybody knows the legend of the Pied no, Piper, I think but most Europeans do. Yeah, yeah, but he, he, with a with a flute, he yeah. draw he draws all the children away from away Hamelin from, right. in exchange for getting away from these rats. rats. That's right. And and the legend that is col- told in Transylvania and Siebenbergen is that they, the children, were magically transported to Transylvania, yeah. and that the German population, which still exists to a certain yeah extent in in Transylvania like there's a town called Karlsbad yeah and um, Sibiu this is actually Zibenberga um, right. is the the Romanian name is Sibiu which is a uh, yeah actually half German half Romanian and a little bit of Hungarian uh, right. but mainly German city where like all the street signs and everything right even the architecture yeah, architecture is, is very right. German schools in German right. and they've been there since 800 years exactly the Germanic, so um, that so yeah. it's interesting that yeah. that the Germ- I don't think people are really aware of how Germanic Transylvania oh, is, yeah. and that again tells yeah. you that why Gothicism is yeah. a very Germanic. Yeah. And of course, the final thing to say about it: well, who were the Goths? Yeah, were a Germanic tribe, right? And okay. of course, originally Gothic meant the architecture yeah. of the Goths That's as right. it came into European. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a lot deeper. Yeah, it's, than, it's, it's, it's not. It's not has the, so many aspects yeah, to it. There's a lot more to it than Bella Lugosi's dead or, or yeah, the cure. And bands, or, yeah, yeah exactly. that's true. Or Susie and the Banshees or right. whatever. Yeah, that's right. true. I mean, I was very attracted as a teenager to goth, but not to the sort of dark side, to the whole, you know, cutting myself or depression or whatever. I was just celebrating that the music and also the you know back the hairstyles and right. the makeup, the white face. I like put right. all this like zinc cream on my face to make it completely like I would look like a ghost or like, like a, a 17th century yeah, aristocrat yeah. with lead yeah and I was 15 and I would get on the train from the suburbs to go into the Melbourne club scene and you know sometimes I would be like completely abused on the train or belted with whatever right. tomatoes but you know um, yeah I really enjoyed it I saw it not I, I saw it as a celebration of the dark side of that uh, mainstream or it's all it's so superficial and so everything's so well, positive cheerful and, and cheerful and, and, and light and colorful and right. I, that's why I thought you know go against the flow it was for me becoming a goth and right. I mean uh, yeah, that was the early 80s also the post-punk scene that right. kind of was you know there was not many borders between the post-punk and uh, gothic scene Any anything yeah. that was not ordinary yeah. boogie blues yeah. based rock and roll yeah. was considered weird yeah. and and I mean, you know, Nick Cave at the time birthday party were like considered um, gothic, gothic to a degree. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, not even punk anymore or post punk, but they were more like considered gothic. And, right. Um, well, you you brought up like, two important points about you said that you were not into the self mutilation yeah. and the dark and depressing. Yeah. And Radio Werewolf, my band, as I said in this interview in this book, Phantoms, like we're Christian death was the other gothic yeah. band in Los Angeles. And people assume we were all one big happy family. Mm. And as in most subcultures, that's not that's even remotely right, okay. true. Uh, yeah. Ra- I knew Roz Williams, and he was a fan of Radio Werewolf. He, okay. came, he came to one of our most controversial concerts in San Francisco, this 888 rally that became like a... a infamous landmark during the satanic panic. Right. Um, but w- regarding what you said, I always used to say that we were homicidal and Roz and Christian death were suicidal. <laughs> so, I mean, we were we were more, in a strange way, more positive, more yeah. heroic, yeah. more... More and like groundbreaking an- somehow as yeah. well. And, yeah, and and not not suicidal, and we we were not part of the heroin yeah. drug culture that yeah. that other bands like Forty Five Grave and I mean the the L A. death rock scene was drenched in heroin, and yeah. it was very depressing. Yeah, 
And most of the people I knew from that time are dead, frankly. Right. Yeah. They either killed themselves or, or were junkies or drunks. Yeah. So we, in a strange way, although we couldn't have been darker, yeah. were much more positive, more heroic, more yeah. forceful and yeah. powerful. And so I never, yeah. I don't really feel a kinship to the depressed, suicidal right. yeah. part of Gothicism. Yeah. That's true. I mean, yeah, I know there. I mean, I lived um, in a shared house with uh, goths who were into that whole dark side. Right, and, uh, right. And, you know, the kind of, you know, the hairy, uh, messy hair and the kind of like uh, depressed look and uh, also, yeah, cutting themselves and the whole blood thing. And Yeah, I, um, think, I think a lot of it know, is an excuse yeah. for suicidal yeah. clinical depression. And I know, I mean, a lot of the times that people saw the gothic scene as like, um, you know, a way to just get in there because you're depressed and you've been abused or you've been emotionally retired or sorry I don't mean to use that word but I mean right. like you know I won't cancel you for it <laughs> thank it's you okay. depraved emotionally depraved or not really coping because right. you've been gone through some kind of traumatic childhood and uh, so I understood that part of it you know so I guess you know I mean I guess um, it yeah, was therapeutic and it was therapeutic for, for a lot like of people that. yeah but and I'm happy that you know they found their ways and oh, excuse me but um is um the festival in leipzig is is there a like is it like does it embrace all sides of gothic oh absolutely right okay. i mean also they i believe they've got over 200 bands playing oh, this time God, at, okay. at at i believe at least 50 venues i right. mean it's it's, it's impossible all, yeah. to keep track of okay. so Every every like every you know every sub mutation of Gothicism right. is it's there. Right, is there represented? Even you know like the, like the corniest kind of horror yeah. rock, okay. kind of schlocky thing in uh, darker avant garde and okay. industrial neo folk. Mm -hmm. um, it's always been more open to more controversial okay. and things that would be taboo elsewhere. So the entire spectrum of what you could yeah. loosely call Gothicism okay. is represented there. All right. So, um, so well, this one is thing I wanted yep. to add too yep. about that, what you said, like now when, like thing things like this horrible Wednesday TV series that Tim Burton made. Oh, I liked it. Well, <laughs> well we can argue about that later. That's a matter of taste. It's but, entertainment for but, me. But but it's the Gothicism yeah. lately has become very defanged, literally, yeah. like very whitewashed, very sweet. Yeah. And Tim Burton. Uh, is one of the people who's responsible for that. Yeah. Like he takes the old gothic stuff and kind of makes it cheerful and whimsical. He's done that before with other movies. Yeah, and so he stuff, yeah. so there's a trend to to make it more cheerful, more yeah. light, more superficial, yeah. and not really be dark. Right. Okay. At all, but I think people like what you were saying you would be abused on the street in yeah. Australia. Yeah. Well, in Hollywood, I mean, people have actually said uh, that I was the original goth. I mean, when I was 10 years old, I made my mother get me black yeah. clothing. You yeah. couldn't find kids' yeah. black clothing. Yeah. So even when punk was starting, I was basically a goth. A goth. <laughs> and you you couldn't walk down the street and yeah. be that. Now now people think it's cute and yeah. fine. But you literally, I mean, people would literally, I w lived in Venice, California, which right. was filled with hippies yep. and you know, Color. colorful and, and mm -hmm. they seeing me, you know, deathly pale yeah. with makeup on, wearing black, people would throw stuff at right. me. People would yell, you know, from the car, yeah. you know, as they went by. You were, you, I would be thrown out of restaurants. Right, yeah. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's important to remember that when this began, it, yeah, was, it was genuinely it transgressive. It scared people. I oh, mean, yeah. I, people were literally scared or they were disgusted by oh, seeing, yeah. like, you know, us with, like, teased hair and black makeup and white faces and ripped clothes. Well, and, Australia you know, has a certain similarity yeah. to California. Yeah, in yeah. The, it's like a sunny, cheerful, That's bright. That's right. Then you have this <laughs> People, I remember, like actually, when the birthday, pa uh, sorry, the bad seeds were in town, and Blix Sabargel, I think it was eighty-eight or eighty-seven. Blix Sabargel was walking down St Kilda, which is the alternative area of um, Melbourne, and he's walking down in leather pants and codpiece and hair like completely teased to the max. You know, like your you know, the definition of goth, God, walking right. down the street. And it was like 40 degrees and there's Blixer in black leather with black boots and studs and whatnot. And people were just like, thought he was insane. Like, oh, yeah. You know, they were yelling at him and he even made that as a statement like, oh, my God, you know, it's like, 
what's wrong with my fashion? You know, it's just like, you know, that's what I wear in Berlin, you know, like in where I come from. This right. is total normal. Well, be wear, wear, wearing what I wore, yeah. as you can see pictures yeah. of me in Los Angeles, <laughs> like black velvet coats in 90 degree weather. Yeah. Yeah, it struck people as completely. And I lived at night because yeah. it was so hot. You yeah, know, exactly. I mean, you know. So which, there's a yeah. lot. I'm sure the Australian and Californian Gothic scene must yeah. have had similarities. Yeah, that's true. And uh, would you like to play another track before we leave? Um, we, we could do that. I wanted to uh, yeah. just say a final word about the concert itself. As yeah. I said, this will be Friday at 8.15 at the Volkspalast Cantina okay. in Leipzig. And I will also be giving two lectures the day after on Saturday at the Heidnische Dorf, the pagan village, at, okay. a, at a building called Kult Forum. Wow. And I will be giving a lecture on one will be called the left the, the authentic left hand path, the feminine divine. That will be at two p.m. Then I will sign autographs. I'll sign records and books for anyone who wants to bring, and there'll be some things available. And then at four p.m. or sixteen, as you Europeans say, I will give a lecture on called "Everything You Know About Satan Is Wrong," in which I will explain why both Christians and Satanists do not understand this being. Okay. So I'll get, so it's, there will be, as I said, a weekend of Shrektivities. I'll give a performance on yeah. Friday, two lectures on Saturday, okay. and, and I'll be happy to meet whoever wants to meet me at this autograph session, which will be in between the two lectures. Good. And, uh, and we will be performing Radio Werewolf songs that haven't been performed in years, and we will be doing new, mu totally new music, unheard music, some of the music from my recent solo album. So it will be a, a treat. spectacle. Spectacle. Yes. Okay. Do you so want to play a track? Let me let me think All about right. what we can play. And thank you so much to Nicholas Schreck, who's mm -hmm. going to be in Leipzig at the World um, Gothic Meeting Festival that's going to take over Leipzig this weekend, starting Friday, I guess, until Monday. So, yeah. Um, I, will, I will play yep. a little bit of a song that is not even finished yet. This, All right. the, now, this is going to be, this is, I'm just going to play the first part okay. of it. Th now, this very complicated concept album time machine is very over orchestrated with all kinds of instruments and in the midst of it i had the idea to do something very simple very minimal to express something more essential okay. maybe more personal so i'm going to play i'm just going to play part of a song this will this will be on destroy she said which will be a ep okay it's on? Yes. Here we go. I hear her sigh song And though I know it's wrong I can't resist It's sweet Every kiss a risk These anguish nights along Imperil paramore I languish here without a cure Oceans of time they flow I know I'll never know what secret she can see. By Cupid's arrow pierced, my heart will never That cuts me like a sword. Thank you. That was uh, a new track from Nicholas Shrek that 
will probably be performing at uh, in Leipzig this weekend. Thank you so much to my guest uh, Nicholas Schreck. It like was. always, it's always a pleasure to hear your stories. I think I should just have you as a guest for like two or three hours. We could do a show that just goes on and on. It was my pleasure to Thank speak uh, about Gothicism with yeah. a genuine Romanian. And <laughs> <laughs> I will now turn into a bat and fly off. Yeah, okay. Thank All you. All right. Uh, la revedere. Ne vedem în curând.